Especially, old forums seem to be littered with misinformation in regards to topics like the one in this video. For example, this GameSpot threads OP asking whether he can see 100 FPS on a 75Hz display received responses like, it's true, and you can't see 100 FPS anyways. Here's another, LCDs do not have refresh rates, they have response times. But what really happens when more frames than the monitor can process are sent from the GPU? And what is screen tearing on a technical level? And how does VSync solve this issue? Welcome to probably a very long episode of Minute Science. Every 0.0167 seconds or thereabouts, or 0.0083 seconds or 0.0042 seconds, your monitor likely refreshes. These are refresh rates adopting the unit hertz, the SI unit of frequency denoted as the multiplicative inverse of seconds. So when a monitor has a 60 hertz refresh rate, it switches images or stills 60 times per second. Frames are usually drawn from top to bottom at speeds our eyes are incapable of discerning and are left on screen for a duration of one divided by the refresh rate itself. But what happens when you send more than the number of frames a screen can process. What happens when a 60 hertz monitor, let's say, receives 100 frames per second on average from a graphics card? And no, I'm not just talking about screen tearing, that's the obvious answer. I want to know what happens on a technical level inside the monitor. Well, if we assume a constant 60 hertz refresh rate, like with this monitor here, and a constant 90 FPS draw from the graphics card, then we're at a roughly 1 to 1.5 deficit on the GPU side, meaning half of every other frame won't be processed by the monitor, at least on paper. Now, in the real world, monitors only call frames when they need them, so the very first frame at these ratios would look perfectly fine once the simulation starts. One frame sent and one frame displayed, but since the monitor isn't refreshing fast enough, the next image displayed will consist of only half of the next full frame. You can look at this mathematically by separating each rate in additive steps using our ratio, 1 plus 1 plus 1 for the monitor, and 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 for the GPU, again assuming a constant frame rate. On the second refresh from the monitor, when its step is 2, the graphics card is already halfway through its second frame, so the monitor compensates by displaying half of the second frame and the first half of the third in this scenario, since the other half of the data from the previous frame was overridden by the graphics card's higher pace. If it didn't override the previous frame, the video would become delayed, increasing input lag to the degree that this was allowed to continue. At step 3, the graphics card will be sending its fourth frame because they're in sync again, and then the cycle repeats, it goes out of sync by a half step, and then it's back in sync, and it keeps alternating. Now, the yield, what we get from that, is what we call screen tearing, and it literally looks like the screen is being torn down the middle. But I should clarify, where it's torn depends largely largely on the refresh to FPS ratio at that time. In this particular example, everything's on a 1 to 1.5 ratio, so the monitor would ideally split every other frame perfectly across the center. And something else to note, screen tearing occurs horizontally because frames are usually drawn in a top to bottom fashion. Now this is where VSync comes in. When enabled, it forces the graphics card to literally synchronize its frame rate, the frames that it's outputting to the monitor, with the calls from the monitor. It'll also typically reduce hardware utilization, but this isn't foolproof, so you might notice a temperature drop or maybe the fans spool down just a little bit, uh, but this is more or less a byproduct of using VSync in the event that you would normally have a much higher frame rate being thrown to the monitor. Now there may be visual benefits to running at a frame rate higher than your refresh rate, even though technically speaking you can't see those extra frames. So many professional FPS gamers in particular keep VSync off because they swear by the decreased input lag and faster interpolation compilations required when aiming. Here's what an Overwatch player had to say. In any case, I disabled VSync recently and wow, what a difference. I can aim now. I always had this issue where I'd be tracking a target like a running soldier and my crosshair would always lag a tiny bit behind where they were. I always thought this was just some practice or mental block issue where I hadn't trained my hand-eye coordination to compensate or something. Now it doesn't happen anymore. I have a couple of friends who have reported the same feeling. It's such a tiny 1 60th of a second delay it's hard for your brain to realize it's not the one making the mistake. My wife swears by VSync off despite the occasional screen tearing and I can kind of see why, but at higher refresh rates these advantages become less apparent in principle. So at 60 hertz, the maximum delay incurred with VSync on would approach 1 60th of a second, right, in time for the next frame to be in sync with the refresh rate. But at 240 hertz, the max delay with VSync is 1 240th of a second, which could make a visual difference to many, though the effectiveness of VSync 
sync at these rates anyway is probably pretty moot. So in summary, extra frames are overridden or split in accordance with the refresh rate in question, but with VSync on, the graphics card draws as many frames as the monitor calls. So no splitting or screen tearing is necessary, maybe only a slight delay that I don't expect too many people would notice, except maybe those who play, I don't know, professionally or uh, really intense first-person shooters. I want to know what you think about this topic in the comments below, if you play with VSync on or off. Uh, we haven't really touched on FreeSync or G-Sync, which are proprietary technologies from AMD and, and, and well, more proprietary for NVIDIA uh, on the G-Sync side, but those technologies are for a separate video. I just wanted to highlight VSync here because almost anybody has access to that. As long as you're playing a relatively modern game, you can turn on the VSync function uh, or the you know 1x, 2x, or 3x uh, buffer, which would basically store those frames in your graph graphics card's memory, kind of a similar process to VSync, uh, just called something different on paper. So if you like the video, you can let me know by giving this one a thumbs up, I appreciate it. Thumbs down for the opposite, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us.